If Ball State University has its way, students won't be able to hide drug and alcohol arrests from their parents. Good evening and welcome to News Center at 930. I'm Amy Barnett. And I'm Josh Witzman. Student leaders say they are outraged over the proposal being brought forth by the university. Under the plan, the university would send a letter to parents whose child is under 21 years old if they had a drug or alcohol violation. That violation could occur on or off campus. University officials say the violations would be judged on a case-by-case -case basis. Now that would help prevent a situation between parents and students with negative relationships, according to the university. The Student Government Association opposes the plan because they maintain students over the age of 18 are legal adults. However, the university can legally send the letters under the 1998 Family Educational Right to Privacy Act. Well, it's prime leasing season for college apartments, and many students are deciding where to live next year, but be careful when choosing. Our partners at the Ball State Daily News uncovered many complaints with one local apartment complex. Here's the Daily News' Megan Farr with a story. He said he looked forward to moving into Muncie's newest apartment complex. Sterling University advertised luxury-style living focused towards Ball State students. Ten months later, Ball says he's happy with his experience, and many are also satisfied with their apartment along with Sterling's computer lab, workout facility, and swimming pool. Property manager Gail Eiler says Sterling is by far the place to be. A lot of people come and say it's, it's like living at a resort because of what we do have to offer. There's a but other students aren't so happy with their year at Sterling. They say they won't be resigning their lease. It's all bubbled out here. And it's really flimsy. It's not even like attached. It's just kind of paneling sticking out from the Was wall. This always like this? Yeah, since we moved in. Bree Wilson says her warped kitchen cabinets aren't the only thing she's upset about. Water leaks in the bedroom and peeling floor tiles, too. Scott Silty won't be returning to Sterling next year either. It's not exactly connected to the uh, counter. Oh. Eiler blames the problem on small screws. All they need to do is let us know. The screws were too short, you know, on a lot right. of them. Well, the and all they need to do is there. have, you know, Jerry goes in and puts longer screws in them, and it, and it, you know, it's not a huge thing. Silty says he did call to complain in October. Today, still broken. I think, I think everybody's human, and sometimes they mess up. And, and if we know about it, you know, that's the other issue. If, as long as it's something that someone will come and, and talk with us about, you know, that's why I'm here, to try to, to come to a solution, try to compromise or, or figure out something. And despite the complaints, Eiler insists not everyone will be happy in any apartment complex. She says she strives to make sure Sterling tenants live as comfortably as possible. Obviously, we want them to be happy here, and I really feel that the majority of them are um, and continue to be. But for Bree Wilson, it's a year's experience she'd like to soon forget. So, so you're not resigning? No, definitely not. Especially not for this kind of money. I mean, I can pay for this kind of quality and pay a hundred and some dollars less a month. Where are you living next year? I'm living with seven girls on Jackson. Ball State Legal Services says it's important to check out all of your options and understand the lease you're signing. A Muncie pet shop manager is facing criminal charges. Many customers have complained McDonald's pet and gift shop neglects mice and hamsters in the store and sells sick animals. The Muncie Animal Shelter has received many complaints in recent years about the bad odor and filth of the store. Manager Mar Marie Williams allegedly waited on customers without washing her hands after she threw dead mice into a trash can. Williams faces charges of animal cruelty and criminal recklessness. Well, we take a break from news now, and Milan Willie joins us with a look at that forecast. Milan, I can't even tell you how gorgeous it oh was my today. Gosh. Yes, very, very beautiful out there. And we're going to continue to keep these nice temperatures, but we will have some rain coming in our forecast. But currently out there for us right now, it's partly cloudy with a low of 67 degrees, and our winds are south at 7 miles per hour. But I have your complete forecast later on. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Milan. Former Indiana State Trooper David Cam still maintains he did not murder his wife and two children in September of 2000. However, a judge still sentenced 38-year-old Cam to 195 years in prison. Prosecutors sought to prove Cam shot his wife in the head during a struggle and then climbed into her vehicle where the children were and shot them also. Authorities believe Cam committed the murders to pursue other women and collect insurance money. 
A mother accused of pushing a teacher in the face pleads guilty to a misdemeanor battery charge. Elaine Moore is accused of pushing Jackson Middle School teacher Eve Woodward in the face during a classroom confrontation in September of 2000, leaving the teacher with broken glasses. According to the plea agreement, Moore agrees to pay for the glasses and take an anger management course as part of her probation. As a result, she won't face any fines or jail time. IU is cleaning up after the men's NCAA championship game. The university racked up $38,000 in overtime costs from disturbances. The IU Dean of Students says disciplinary action may be, hand, may be handed out for many students, for the 55 students arrested on campus, and they could face being suspended. Those who destroyed property or have a previous disciplinary rec record could face lengthy suspensions. The U.S. Senate is one step closer to stopping voting fraud, thanks in part to Indiana Senator Dick Lugar's amendment. The Senate passed the amendment which allows states to use federal grant money to establish toll-free telephone hotlines, which will be used to report possible voting fraud. The bill also includes a total of $3.5 billion in federal money to upgrade election equipment and procedures nationwide. The bill still needs to pass the House. A state senator used his office email to arrange meetings with women. That's according to a 900-page transcript of Senator Mark Blade's email account. They revealed extensive correspondence apparently unrelated to his former position as Vigo County School Corporation's purchasing director. Some of the messages sent to Blade from 1997 through 2000 were from two women whose messages were laced with sexual references. The Tribune Star reports that none of the emails Blade sent out were of a graphic nature. He also exchanged several messages with his wife. A Northwest Indiana hospital is easing community concerns over an employee's meningitis diagnosis. White County Memorial Hospital says the employee became ill after a trip to Mexico. The woman was brought to the hospital after coming down with a high fever and losing consciousness. Hospital officials say 50 staff members and the woman's family were given antibiotics as a precaution. Bacterial meningitis is an infection of the fluid and membranes covering the brain and spinal cord. Four nonprofit groups are suing the state of Indiana over its no call list. The joint federal lawsuit was filed against the no call law that took effect January 1st. Four nonprofit representing disabled veterans, state law enforcement, police chiefs, and school prayer advocates. They say they rely on telemarketing to raise funds. In court documents, they claim the law violates their First Amendment rights. Indiana Attorney General Steve Carter says he will defend the law. A partnership in Indiana skies could save Hoosiers money. Five regional airports are working together in an attempt to offer new air service in Indiana. We're having some problems with our lighting there. We hope to get that back soon. The Gary Chicago, South Bend, Evansville, Terre Haute, and Purdue University airports will share the cost of per pursuing a federal grant. The grant money would be used to offer lawmakers, business owners, and other interstate flights at a reasonable rate. And there the lights. Back That's on. right. Officials who maintain central, central Indiana's covered bridges are looking to protect the landmarks from would-be arsonists. County officials will spray the bridges with a fire retardant chemical to protect the 31 remaining covered bridges. bridges. Arsonists are suspected of destroying the 87-year-old Jeffries Ford Bridge about 15 miles northeast of Terre Haute earlier this month. A suspected arson last month caused minor damage to another covered bridge in the area. From our partners at the Ball State Daily News, here's tomorrow's headlines tonight. Ball State political groups speak out on a variety of issues and in part two of the series, Ball State students explain the trials and tribulations of being a single parent on campus. Also, the University Senate debates the future of the university governance system. These stories and more will be available in tomorrow's edition of the Ball State Daily News. Well, coming up on News Center at 930, Colin Powell tries to defuse the volatile Middle, Middle East crisis. Also, the Russian government foils an alleged U.S. spy ring. Stay tuned. In the troubled Middle East, all eyes and much hope now rest on U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell, the Bush administration's point man for peace. Andrea Koppel has more on the Secretary's crusade. Jordan's King Abdullah summed it up best when he said that Secretary Powell's mission was a make or break one. Arab leaders who have watched the Arab-Israeli 
peacemaking process wax and wane over the last 50 years describe the period right now as one of the darkest in the peacemaking process. Secretary Powell has no illusions, however, of trying to broker a ceasefire. In fact, today the White House already began to downplay any expectations that that would be the result of Secretary Powell's stay here in the region. Secretary Powell himself try to uh, downplay as well any idea that there might be a showdown between himself and Israel's Prime Minister Ariel Sharon, who has as yet to listen to the Bush administration, the international community's demand for an Israeli withdrawal from West Bank cities. Having said that, the stakes are unbelievably high, and Secretary Powell, regional leaders say he can't afford to fail either. And so Secretary Powell's challenge right now is somewhat of a diplomatic catch-22, how to get the Israelis to withdraw from the West Bank and how to get the Palestinians to rein in extremists when both sides are saying the other has to move first. Andrea Koppel, CNN, Jerusalem. American doctors will get some help in the fight against anthrax. A group of drug makers will distribute brochures describing anthrax making it easier for health care workers to identify and treat patients affected with the virus. The guides will be in circulated in 13 cities nationwide. Representatives of the drug industry suggested the program. An international criminal court could soon become part of the United Nations. At a ceremony at a U.N. headquarters in New York, ten more countries ratified a treaty establishing the court. The U.N. now has six more countries than they originally needed to establish the facility. The tribunal is expected to go into operation next year at The Hague. The United States has not officially ratified the treaty. Russian security agents say they uncovered an attempt by the U.S. government to steal military secrets. The word of the spy scandal comes just weeks before a Russian-U.S. summit. As CNN's Jill Daughtery reports, the spy ring accusations have many pointing fingers. Details of the latest spy scandal reported on state-controlled Russian television sounded like a spy novel. An employee at a secret Russian defense ministry installation is found nearly unconscious under the influence of unknown mind-altering drugs. An alleged attempt by the CIA to recruit him, complete with cash left at drop points, a letter written in disappearing ink, and undercover videotapes of a woman from the U.S. Embassy in Moscow described as an employee of the CIA. On camera, in shadow, an agent of the FSB, Russia's security service, says the Americans were shopping for information on missiles and Moscow's military cooperation with other countries. But it shut down the operation. As usual in spy matters, the U.S. Embassy had no comment. The story broke as President Vladimir Putin was visiting Germany. And some Kremlin observers questioned the timing of the spy case, coming six weeks before Mr. Putin and U.S. President George W. Bush hold a summit in Moscow. Some claim Russia's security elite, unhappy with President Putin's pro-Western policies after September 11th, are trying to undermine him. Another theory, President Putin okayed the public revelation in order to show he takes seriously the resentment of Russia's security, military, and political elite. Putin has a, a, a broad coalition uh, to uh, preside over, and uh, he must uh, make sure that no significant portion of uh, the bureaucracy um, actually rebels against his uh, foreign policy course and he pays attention. Mr. Putin's pro-Western stance may be winning him applause abroad, but here in Russia, it's a double-edged sword. This spy scandal may quickly blow over, but the resentment among Russia's ruling elite will not. Jill Doherty, CNN, Moscow. And we take a break from news again for weather. And I tell you what, Milan, gorgeous outside today. Gorgeous Almost, day, I yes. broke out the shorts, wanted to break out the suntan oil, <laughs> but thought it might be a little soon. Yeah. Very, very nice out there, and it will continue. But what I want to get to is our weather question here. And as they pull up our weather question, we're going to see what is the radar, the acronym for? Is it A, the rain degree in ranging, B, radio detection in ranging, 
C, rapid detection and rain, or D, radiation degree and rain. I'll have that answer and the complete forecast right after the break. We had a beautiful day today. Look at that. Our high got up to 77 degrees, and we had that bright sunshine out there just making it a wonderful day out there. Our highs around Indiana for today, South Bend got up to 75, Muncie and Lafayette 77, and Evansville, the hot spot down there, got up to 81 degrees. Now, as we take a look at the cloud cover, we see we have some cloud cover of the Great Lakes regions and also some cloud cover over to the southeast. And where that cloud cover is is where the rain is. So as we take a look at our radar here, we can see that rain that I was talking about just west of us and more so southeast of us, that is why they're getting the rain. But just to take a look at our area, look at that. Nothing really going on in our area. And that is something very, very good because we do have some rain coming in later tonight and tomorrow. But currently out there, we have those party cloudy skies with a temperature of 67 and our winds are south at 8 miles per hour. Now, as we take a look at tonight, we can see this front that moved through the area and that's where they're getting the rain down there on the southeastern coast. And also this low pressure system up here. And as it moves more into our area, that's going to be sparking up some rain for tomorrow. But for our lows for tonight, take a look at that we'll be in the 40s for our lows and as you move more south some 50s and even some 60s but we'll be experiencing some lows now for tonight for us it'll be party cloudy out there and some showers that may occur late if they do occur there will be scattered showers with a low of 57 degrees and our winds are southwest now tomorrow morning when you wake up you'll be waking up to those mostly cloudy skies with a temperature of 52 degrees and our winds will be south at 12 miles per hour as we take a look at our highs we see that we'll be experiencing some 60s in our area for tomorrow but look at the southern part of Indiana Evansville they'll be in the 70s for tomorrow for our highs. As we look at what we'll be getting for tomorrow, look at that. The rain will come into our area, a high of 65 degrees, and our winds will be southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Now, as we take a look at our three-day coming up here, look, take a look at that. Saturday, we got some showers that are coming into our area Saturday. And for Sunday, we're going to get a break for those showers. But on Monday, the showers will return. Our temperature on Saturday will be 63. Sunday, 58. And on Monday, our temperature will be 65 degrees. Looks good. That's pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Keeping those nice warm temperatures. That's right. Mm -hmm. our, now, our weather yeah, question. I was like, oh, where's yeah, the question? We can't forget about the question. Now, what do you think? Uh, can we pop it back up so I can see the choices again? No, okay. That's not an option. We'll get that okay. later. Okay, okay cool thank question. you. We'll come back. Uh, we're going to join Tom now with sports. Tom, I tell you what, I hope we got a lot of Masters because I have been watching. I'm, I'm proud of myself. Yeah, it's, it's really a great tournament right now. We got a real, we got a surprise leader in the clubhouse in the first round, so I'll tell you guys a little bit about that. Plus, we got some news on uh, Lonnie Jones and uh, Ball State Baseball. A big uh, matchup this weekend. All that and more when New Center 43 Sports return. <laughs> Welcome back to News Center. And while Patrick Jackson struggled to make a lasting impression on the scouts at, po at the Portsmouth Invitational, Lonnie Jones sure made the most of his visits. Jones played 26 minutes in his first game and led his team in scoring with 14 points, along with eight boards and a team best two blocks. In his second game, he had five points, six boards, but swatted five shots. Draft experts are predicting that Jones could go as high as the second round in the NBA draft, and ESPN.com has listed Jones among the players they believe will come out of the Invitational and into the NBA. And after a rough start to the season, the Ball State baseball squad is starting to make some noise. The Cards have yet to lose at home, are riding a five-game win streak, and have climbed to the top of the MAC West division with a 6-2 mark. The Cards must now defend the homeland against the rival Red Hawks of Miami on Friday. The two teams will meet for the first time this season for a twin bill beginning at 1 o'clock. Then the Cards will return to favor when they travel to Oxford for two more against the Hawks on Sunday afternoon. And it's April, which usually means half the major league schedule gets rained out. Tigers playing in that one tournament in Georgia. And, oh yeah, the, football, the college football fans start to count down the beginning of their season. Well, Ball State is no exception, and the Cards will continue their, con excuse me, conclude their spring practice with the annual Cardinal and White game this Sunday at Ball State Stadium. As always, admission is free, kickoff is set for 1 p.m., and Ball State opens their first 12-game regular season in school history September 7th at Missouri. 
And the first round of the Masters is in the books, and the leaderboard is chock full of big names, all hoping they can catch, no, not Tiger, but Davis Love III. The surprise of the Masters came out on fire this afternoon and tamed the longer, more difficult Augusta National with a bogey-free 67 for a 5-under total. The leader in the clubhouse on day one will not have it easy holding on to the top spot. Sergio Garcia trails by just one shot, while Nick Price, Phil Mickelson, Retief Goosen, and Padraig Harrington sit at 3-under. Tiger was hot early, but he cooled off down the stretch to finish with a 2-under 70. But guys, he's lurking, and you know, no lead is safe when Tiger's on the course. No, you know, I think he'll come back. I think he will, too. And Tom, they're saying that the changes at Augusta were made to to kind of pull Tiger back. To get a little Tiger proof. They added 285 yards to the course, moved a lot of tee boxes back, but Tiger seemed to tame Augusta. We'll see uh, how the weekend goes. All right. Okay, thanks, great, Tom. thanks. When News Center at 930 returns, Milan and Willie will have one last look at what to expect for the weekend. And she'll have the important answer to the question, so stay with us. For the last look at your weather for tonight, will be partly cloudy. We may have some showers that come in here after midnight. Tomorrow, with the rain approaches, a high of 65, and our winds will be southwest. And look at our three-day. We have some rain on Sunday, but Monday we get a break, but we may get some showers on Saturday, and we will stay close to the 60s for the rest of the weekend. And our weather question here, what do you guys think? I think it's B. I think it's A. The answer is B. So Josh, oh, oh, my oh, my gosh, Josh is twice. Oh, yeah. I am leading. I am leading, leading the pack. Okay. I'm we'll something about that, Amy. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us for News Center at 930. I'm Amy Barnett. And I'm Josh Woodsman. News Center 43 is an official CNN student bureau. Be sure to tune in Sunday for News Center Weekend at 930.